we had good reason to believe that we might never be able to get pregnant. I have actually had three ultrasounds, which is two more than what I should have had at this point. Josh ended up staging an intervention <laughs> basically where he was like, you have to stop eating steak. Both of us initially thought that we're gonna be having a Hey guys, I feel like if you clicked on this pregnancy Q&A video, then you probably know who we are. But if you do not know who we are, my name is Alicia. And I'm Joshua. And we recently, a few months ago, found out that we are pregnant with our first child. And we just finished posting what I guess you could call the pregnancy trilogy which was the first video was me finding out I was pregnant. The second one was waiting a whole week to tell my husband I was pregnant. If you're wondering why that was, go look at that video. And then the third video was telling my husband that I'm pregnant. Actually, there were four and because then, then it was telling our friends, friends and, and family. family. So the pregnancy quadrilogy. Quadrilogy. <laughs> I don't know what I don't to know call the, it. Should we Google that real quick? <laughs> <laughs> the qua yeah, the pregnancy qua the qua <laughs> the <laughs> So we asked on our Instagram and on our YouTube channel for you guys to send in any pregnancy related questions. And today we're gonna answer them. Also, we're back with our little spatula <laughs> microphone holder and I actually love it. Everyone in the comments on that video that we used this in, was like, that's such a good idea, so creative. <laughs> so I think instead of buying a replacement mic, we're just gonna stick with this Like this stick. is, I feel like this is, it has so much character and I feel like it grows me as a person. I thought this one was really funny. In your one video, you joked about having a baby. Were you pregnant then or trying? We weren't trying, but I think that was literally, like I think while we filmed that video and made that joke about being pregnant, I was pregnant and I had no idea. Was that really? Yeah, when I was like, should we make a baby or something like that? Yeah, it would have been like right around that time. Isn't that nuts? That's actually kind of crazy. I'll put the um, clip on the screen here if you haven't seen that video. And Do you want to like make a baby right now? Oh my God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it is so beautiful hearing you uh -huh. like talk about the future and raising yeah. kids. That actually kind of blows my mind. <laughs> Will you teach your bundle of joy multilingualism or just English? We think it's really important for our little baby to speak Afrikaans. Yeah. To prat Afrikaans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was born in South Africa. I was raised in New Zealand, but I've spoken Afrikaans my whole life. And Josh is busy learning Afrikaans because we really want our kid to be able to speak both English and Afrikaans. So I don't know about multilingualism, but definitely <laughs> bilingualism. I love like watching you read long words. Like I suck at reading, but my vocabulary is big. So I can be like, oh yeah, that's, that's, that's what that word is. And you're like, so you're saying I'm good at reading about my vocabulary talks? Yeah. <laughs> or like yesterday we were watching the fights. So you're like, how do I pronounce his name? And I'm like, like, granted, it is a hard name, but like, I have no problem. That was like, he had like no vowels. It was his like <laughs> Marab Duwalish Wheelie. Yeah, that doesn't mean that I'm <laughs> vocabulary. Okay. Yeah, you should know that name. <laughs> and if you don't know that name, you have a small... You should know that it means mailman in French. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. I also was laughing so hard just then because you like wheezed so hard like just now. You were oh, like, really? you're like <gasps> Yeah, since getting pregnant, like I breathe so loud. <laughs> like Josh the other day in the car, remember you were like you're like, why did you do that? And I was like, what? And I was like, why are you growling? You're yeah. Like, <sighs> I didn't even know that I did that. I still I'm like, really did I do that? You but he it. insists that I was like Growling. I promise I wasn't gaslighting you. <laughs> okay. And if you think I was gaslighting you, you're obviously, it's your you're fault. You're obviously crazy. You're obviously crazy. <laughs> it's your fault. <laughs> All right. Have you had your ultrasound yet? If so, how did it go? I have actually had three ultrasounds, which is 
two more than what I should have had at this point. Um, (laughs) So I thought that I was further along than I was at the very beginning. So I had an ultrasound and literally all we saw was a yolk sac. Like we couldn't even see the baby because I was so early on. Mm -hmm. Then I came back when I was actually 10 weeks, which in Canada, 10 weeks is when you have your dating ultrasound, when they like give you your due date and everything. So I had that ultrasound and it was so cute being able to see the baby and Josh was able to be there. Because for those of you who don't know, he works away for a week and he's home for a week. So he was able to be there, which was awesome. Then six days later, I had a midwife appointment and she was trying to hear the heartbeat of the baby and she couldn't find it. And she told me that she wasn't worried about it because usually she only worries if she can't find the heartbeat by 15 weeks. And I was not even close to 15 weeks yet. But she said that for my own peace of mind, she could send me for another ultrasound. So I was like, yeah, why not? (laughs) And then my friend Laura came with me to that one. And it was so cute because the baby had the hiccups. And because the baby was so small, I think it was like the size of a strawberry at that point. When the baby had the hiccups, it was like literally bouncing up like to the top of the uterus because it was so small that its whole body was just like, boing, which was really cute. Can you do that sound again, please? Boing. (laughs) How did you find the ultrasounds? Oh, they were really cool. Um, first things first, I was like, that's a lot of jelly. It's like, that probably oh, really? is so uncomfortable. Just like, mm, <laughs> let me just like <laughs> spread this jelly all yeah. over your tummy. <laughs> like, and then like every time they're like, oh, sorry, I got some on your underwear. Like, yeah. And you're like, that's fine, I like, guess. Yeah, the ultrasound, both ultrasounds you were at, yeah. the yolk sac one and the 10 week yeah. one. And then when we heard the heartbeat for the first time, they got jelly on my underwear, but that's okay. But it doesn't matter. It's It's worth it for seeing the baby and for hearing the heartbeat. But also I felt a lot more than just like, wow, there's jelly on your tummy. Like, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, like that's not the only thing that went through my head. Just clarifying. What was the most like impactful moment? You're like, just seeing how much jelly they put on your (laughs) stuff. When you think back on those ultrasounds, what do you feel? Um, <laughs> I know you love when I, I ask you about your questions. feelings. I just thought like, wow, that's like my baby in there. And mm-hmm. I just wanted to see like little hands and little feet and stuff. Like I just wanted yeah. to see more. Yeah. And then it when it was we, moving its little yeah. hands. Yeah. And then when we could see, he was like that, that like pulsing line is the heartbeat. Yeah. And that was kind of cool. Yeah. Like so we, we weren't able to, to hear it, but we were able to see it. Yeah. So that, that was, was cool. really cool. What are you both most excited for about becoming parents? I'm just excited in general. Like we have a dog and like we know what that dog is about to ask us and he doesn't speak. So (laughs) (laughs) yeah, I'm just excited for like, okay, it's been about X amount of time. Baby's probably tired, probably needs a nap or like just getting to know your child. Yeah. Like, okay, well that was a different kind of cry. That was a hungry cry. That wasn't like a... Mm -hmm ouchy cry or that's an upset stomach cry like i'm just excited to like learn and like you always talk about how excited you are to like teach the kid things as well like teaching them how to ride a bike for the first time and how to run how to fish how to fish like our kids are gonna know how to like gut a fish i feel like he's Mm. gonna be such a like hands-on oh yeah teaching the kid stuff in a playful way yeah dad and then my answer is really basic I am just so excited for baby cuddles and it's my baby. So I can just cuddle this baby and kiss their cheeks all the time. I think I'm thinking more about baby moments than like future moments of them riding a bike. Like mm. I find myself thinking of like bathing my baby for the oh, first time. Oh, that's going to be so cute. Yeah. Smelling them. Excuse me. Pregnancy. <laughs> What is the most surprising thing about being pregnant? I would say two things. The first thing is in the first trimester, I was blown away by what a toll this baby takes on your body. I didn't even have terrible morning sickness. I was nauseous all the time, but I never threw up. And I was also so tired. Like it didn't matter how much I slept. I was sleeping like 12 hours and then I'd have like a nap in the day and I was so unbelievably tired and I just was like 
This baby is the size of a blueberry. How is it sucking all my energy and making me feel this nauseous? Like, it is just mind blowing. She'd sleep like 9 p.m. to like 9 a.m. And then by by like noon, she'd be like, I need a nap. I'm yeah. Like, what? You've been up for three hours. Yeah. <laughs> and I just always thought, you know, first trimester, you're not even showing. Your baby's not that big. Surely there's not that much of a toll on your body. But like, wow. The Wrong. first, Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm in my second trimester now. And I think the toll on my body was worse in the first trimester for sure. Like I still have symptoms now, different symptoms, but I would way rather choose the second trimester than the first. And then the second thing that's been surprising is that I always thought that when I got pregnant, I would feel like a pregnant person. Like I just thought I would feel different. Like mm. I'd constantly be like, I am, I am in a different body. I am in a pregnant body. But it just feels like my body. And sometimes I'm like, am I really pregnant? And I'm like, I've literally heard the heartbeat. I've had three ultrasounds. I've had all of these symptoms and experiences. I'm getting a bump. I know that I'm pregnant, but sometimes I just don't feel pregnant because I just feel like myself. It's just my body. Mm -hmm. Will you give birth in Canada or in New Zealand? Uh, Canada. <laughs> At one point, is it not safe to fly during a pregnancy? I don't know when, So you'd but... have to, like, okay, well, I'll just stay in Canada until such and such a time, then I'll fly to New Zealand, and then yeah. just stay there until we the baby comes? If we were full-time YouTubers, maybe we would have done that. Like, we would have considered it. But we're not. We have jobs mm. and responsibilities, so we can't just up and leave and go for, like, four months or however <laughs> yeah. long it would be. Yeah. How are you feeling mentally and physically? I'm feeling like really bloated <laughs> and I have to get up to pee all the time. <laughs> and oh my gosh, don't get me started on my mood swings. <laughs> That's not true. I've actually been a very pleasant pregnant woman, I think. Yeah. I I've mean, not been that bad. I haven't like ever... I mean, I did literally cry over spilled milk yesterday, but we won't get into that. <laughs> Physically, I've been feeling pretty good now that I'm in the second trimester. I do have like some back pain, hip pain. I have insomnia pretty bad. Uh, I get frequent headaches. I guess it sounds like I'm not awful. doing good. Yeah, pretty awful headaches, actually. I've had a couple of like pretty bad mm. migraines. And then the only thing I can take is Tylenol, which is Panadol if you live in New Zealand. But other than that, I feel great. It doesn't sound great. I know, it actually doesn't. But Like, well, also other than the fact knee. that my neck, my back, my shoulders, my feet. <laughs> yeah, my head. My head. Yeah. But it's still not as bad as the first trimester, honestly. And I'm just grateful to be pregnant. And everything is a reminder that there's a baby um, growing inside of me. And mm -hmm. so I will, t I will take it as it comes, but I will be making a video of like first trimester recap, second trimester oh. recap, third trimester recap. It'll just be like a wife talk. So it'll just be me and you guys. Um, and I will tell you week by week what symptoms I've had. I've been keeping notes in my phone since I found oh. out I was pregnant. I didn't know that. That's kind of smart. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, and then mentally. I think we're feeling good mentally. Yeah, I mean, I there's there's been no hormonal change for me, so I know, but it's a big life change. Yeah, yeah, we both feel good. Yeah, mentally. high five. <laughs> were you guys trying, and what are your cravings? We were not trying, but we also were not being super careful because we. For, we had good reason to believe that we might never be able to get pregnant mm -hmm. um, or that if we did, it would take us a really long time. So we were kind of leaving the door a little bit open. Um, so this was a very, very happy surprise. Yeah. And we can make a whole separate video on why we had concerns about not being able to conceive because it's such a testimony mm -hmm. and literally all glory to God. That this has happened. Yeah. We can't wait. And then cravings. In the very beginning of the first trimester, I had zero cravings because I didn't want to eat anything because I was so nauseous. 
So anything I could eat, I would eat. Basically the blander, the better. Uh, sometimes I just had like plain, like white bread, plain crackers. Mm. The plainer and less fla- amount of flavor, the better. Then I started wanting salty things. Like I went through a phase of like, I wanted steak every single day. First it was the chicken. Oh yeah, first it was fried chicken, which now I'm like, fried chicken. Like, because I had way too much fried chicken. You were having it like every day. For like four days, I think. Yeah. Oh, now I can't (laughs) think about fried chicken. But I just wanted like the salt and the grease. And then I... That sounds so bad. I know, but I just wanted it so bad. I can't even put myself in that mindset now, but that's how I was feeling. And then I went through a phase of wanting steak. And I wanted to put a ton of salt on the steak. So I had steak. Josh ended up staging an intervention basically (laughs) where he was like, you have to stop eating steak because you're going to do exactly what you did with the fried chicken, which is like turn yourself off of steak. And then I tried to defend myself and I was like, I have only had steak five times this week. And then I paused and I was like, I guess that's quite excessive. Went through a stage of just wanted to, wanting to eat salty nuts, like salty cashews, salty almonds. Mm. I definitely went through a big salty stage. Now I am kind of wanting more sweet things, not necessarily desserts. Fruit. Yeah, fruit, orange juice. Um, I have been loving having jam on toast. I've definitely gone through stages, like phases this pregnancy for sure. Of just wanting a very specific thing. Mm -hmm. Right now it's fruit and jam on toast. Are you planning on buying a house? We are. Um, We're hoping for like summer of 2025. Mm -hmm. But uh, market isn't great right now. So Mm -hmm. we're just going to save and see what our options are. Yeah, for the first little part of baby's life, we're definitely going to be staying in our apartment right now. Even though it's a one bedroom, it's is very affordable rent and our bedroom is quite spacious our living room is quite spacious i don't think it's going to be difficult to make it work with a baby plus doctors recommend that the baby sleeps in your room for the first six months anyway Mm -hmm. and i'm going to make a whole video on like transforming our bedroom into a master shared with a nursery Mm. which i'm so excited about because i have such good ideas that i'm like I can't wait to show you with you guys how I'm going to make over this room. <laughs> how long is Josh planning to book time off when you have the baby? I contacted our HR director in the company and they let me know that I actually get quite a bit of time off. So we're kind of shooting for around two months-ish. So mm-hmm. that should be give us enough time to, you know, be together and me to help her out. and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my mom's coming as well from mm-hmm. New Zealand. And so she's going to be helping us too. She said that she'll cook for us every night. And she's a dang good cook. I know. I can't wait. Yeah. And then before she leaves, she said she'll freeze some of my favorite oh, meals for us. I didn't know that. That's going to be sweet. Yeah. So that when she leaves, we have like a bunch of her cooking like frozen that we can mm. just thaw and eat. Mm. Oh, I'm so stoked to have her here. And yeah, so two months, give or take. Like we'll see what birth is like, how much recovery time I need. His work is very generous with their time off, but he is also a very loyal employee and doesn't want to take advantage of how much time he gets given. So being mindful of that, plus also how much time me and baby need. Yeah, obviously trying to make sure that Alicia is taken care of, but then also I do have my responsibilities at work too, so we'll make it work. Obviously you come first, (laughs) like without a doubt. (laughs) Next question. This person just said boy or girl. So we don't know yet. We're going to be going to New Zealand next month. And that's when we're going to do our gender reveal. Oh. Yeah. So we've got a whole video coming and we're going to film that. Too. We're going to film it. We're got a bunch of friends and family that's going to be there. And we're super excited. You guys have a bunch of exciting content coming yeah. your way. Like If you haven't subscribed and you enjoy our videos, subscribe. Now is the time and turn on the notification bell because the videos are just going to get better and better. Both of us initially thought 
that we're going to be having a girl. Mm -hmm. But like all of our friends and family think we're having a boy. Except for a few. Like, yeah. A few people think girl, but most people think we're having a boy. It's probably like literally like 85, 15. Yeah. Comment down below what you think. Do you think that yeah. it is a boy or a girl? I would be so curious to see if the ratio in the comments is the same as the ratio in real life yeah. of people guessing. Does Josh plan on having a career change so that he will be home more? So the answer is no. Um, with my current job, I work for a week and then I'm home for a week. So we actually would like to homeschool. Mm -hmm. And if we homeschool, that means that I'm actually home for a week at a time. I don't have to yeah. say goodbye to my kids in the morning and then just like pick them up from school at like three or four, play with them for a couple mm -hmm. hours and then put them to bed. Like, like if you tally up the hours in a month that you'll have with the kids, it's going to be more. Probably more, yeah. Probably more than dads who work a nine to five. Yeah. Cause, and I also won't just be like tired at the end of the day of work. Mm -hmm. Be like, oh, I just want to relax. Be like, no. Like, I... Yeah, you can be a little PE teacher, yeah, history yeah, like, teacher. You know, gonna wake up first thing in the morning and like go, I don't know, go make play, pancakes, make pancakes, <laughs> and like go play around a disc golf or something. You know? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm so excited, like, to homeschool <clears throat> and to do that together. Yeah. Like when you're home and when you come home, they can show you stuff that we've been working on, <laughs> like little so art projects. Yeah, I mean that's a little bit pretty far down the road but still i know but i can't stop i know thinking it's, all, it's it. all i can think about too yeah baby names we have a boy name and a girl name picked out solidified would you say oh yeah like first name mid and middle name yep yeah i think i was kind of thinking oh we should probably have like two or three names per gender so that when the baby's born we can see which one fits with them but we just have a boy name that we're in love with and we have a girl name that we're in love with. And mm -hmm. no other names that we've brought up have come close. Yeah. And so we just know like that these are the two names. And I, I've been thinking about doing a video of like names we love but won't be using. But then I kind of don't want to do it because what if we have another kid and then we do end up using one of those names but if enough of you ask me to do that in the comments we will do it but a lot of you will have to ask us to do that all right and then this is the last question that we'll do there are still so many questions that we haven't gotten to i'm so sorry if we haven't gotten to your question we'll probably do a part two because mm -hmm. this is fun for us to film we yeah. love talking about our baby and just about all of these pregnancy things so we can easily do a part two this final question is about the OG baby in our household, and that is Mr. Baby Franklin, who is our black golden doodle. And the question is, how do you plan to prepare your dog for baby's arrival? We've briefly talked about this. Yeah, I didn't even really think about that until Alicia you know, showed me this question. Mm -hmm. um, but from what we've kind of been looking online, the best thing to do is to like for the father to bring home like a blanket mm -hmm. that you swaddle the baby in mm -hmm. at the hospital yeah and then just like give that to the dog so they can oh there's this new scent that's yeah. gonna be in the house very soon yeah we're not too worried about franklin though to be honest because franklin he's a golden doodle so he is the kind of dog where every single stranger is his new best friend and if anything, I think he's going to be a little bit jealous, but I think all that that will mean is that sometimes when I'm maybe like holding the baby, then Franklin will probably come and he'll like squeeze his he's head He's just going to do this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just like lean on me and Josh while we're holding the baby. Okay. Okay. We... That's what he does. I bet that sounds real good in the mic. You. He's pretty good on walks. I don't feel like he'll pull too much when I'm on the when I'm using a stroller. Mm -hmm. We could maybe my, work on that a little bit. My biggest more. concern actually is just him licking the baby. That's the only mm. thing that I'm concerned cuz I don't know about you guys, but like after getting a dog cuz I had dogs all growing up, but like they were my parents' dogs and I wasn't like ultimately responsible for them. Dogs are really really gross really sometimes. Gross. And um 
just don't, yeah. I know what you're thinking. Should I say this or should I? Not I'm gonna say to? it. I've seen my dog eat poo, and uh, out of his own butt. <laughs> Gross. It's so gross. I do brush his teeth though. We have like special dog toothpaste, but sometimes I just can't keep up with him, guys. Like, and, and like he doesn't he doesn't do this on a regular basis. But like if it's like happened a few it's times. Ha yeah, it's happened a few times. And like I know it's pretty common for dogs to do. So mm -hmm. they even say like. I remember when we first got them, they're like, if your dog is eating his own poo, like sometimes it means they have like a deficiency, deficiency or something like that. Like it's very common for dogs to eat poo, even other dogs poo or like horse poo they or whatever. Even, even not having a nutrient deficiency, but sometimes it's just like, uh, uh, oh. like what do you call it? Like a pass down instinct. Yeah. Because sometimes wolves will eat their own poo in order to like reduce the scent of their trail yeah that's so gross and so sometimes dogs do it just because it's like an instinct instinctive thing yeah. so oh. i don't let dogs lick my face ever i don't let my dog lick my face i don't even like it when he licks my clothing or anything like he can he can nuzzle into me but like second that tongue comes out mm. bye yeah i don't want him to get baby sick babies are so like sensitive no licking the baby. Yeah, don't lick the baby, Franklin. Well, thank you so much for watching this video, you guys, and for hanging out with us. Um, if you want a part two, make sure to comment that down below. But otherwise, we have so many videos coming that we cannot wait to post and to share with you. And don't worry, not all of our content is now just going to be baby stuff. We're still going to do our classic videos where we have some vlogs and we do sit down videos about faith and marriage mm -hmm. and helping you guys and serving you guys you guys in your relationships so don't worry you're not losing us just because we ha we're having a baby well thanks for watching guys don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one bye all right that's good perfect perfect <laughs>